Hello and welcome to my new video on the gamma function. In this video I will show you a very very cool formula that was first derived or better proved by Euler. Okay, that is why I call it the Euler integral. And I think he did it only in a special case and I'm doing the general case. Okay, one can prove this in a very general case. And you will end up having these strange looking integrals, okay, u to the n s minus 1, e to the minus a, u to the n, cosine is v, u to the n du. And it's very important that all your constants in here are independent. So you can just go ahead and plug in everything you want and try to evaluate that integral and see if you get something by looking at the left hand side. Okay, this is the powerful way in calculating a lot or better in cracking a lot of integrals that you might come up with okay actually this has Gauss integral in it it has Fresnel integral in it and it has the integral over the sink function in it so it's a very very powerful formula that you can use to derive a lot of special formulas okay so let's just have a look at how do he derived this okay how Euler did this Actually, like I told you, he only I uh, only read in his paper where he derived this by using n equals one. Okay, so this is uh, the case where you just uh, substitute t equals p u. Okay, and now what I'm doing is I'm doing the more general case in order to get a more general and more powerful formula. Okay, so what he did was he took this first substitution. This was not the um, very creative step that he did. Everyone could have thought of doing, well, let's just plug in this. What he did then was he <coughs> just, sorry, he just di differentiated this to get on the right hand side p and u to the n minus 1 du. So this is just a power rule and as p is a constant, it's not part of the differentiation. Okay. So what we have to do now is plug in for t this p u to the n here, here, and for dt we will plug in pn u to the n minus 1 du, okay? <coughs> Sorry, okay, let's go on. And what he got is this here. Actually, I took p to the s minus 1 u to the n to the s minus 1, this body here, just plugged in this expression for t, pn u to the n minus 1 du. Now just go ahead and sort things, the n you can put in front, p to the s minus 1 and this p will give you p to the s and this body and this body will just compress itself to u to the n s minus 1 and here the exponential doesn't change a lot. Now what you can do is you can just just divide by n multiply it with p to the s. Okay, very important here is that your u is not uh, better your n is not equal to zero that would not make sense okay because if you would uh, plug in n equals zero what you would get here would be a constant and you cannot take a variable and make it constant by substitution okay so the the n case is not allowed now you would get this integral and what Euler did and now this is the most creative thing uh, one could think of and you can actually try to use this technique for other integrals what he did was instead of using p as a real number he just used p as a complex number and then took its complex conjugate okay you might think wow that looks a little bit strange and actually this is very very strange but what he just used this plug this in and actually he said wow the boundaries should not change because I didn't change u okay only p actually uh, he didn't say this I think the boundaries change but um, actually you will end up seeing that the integral that you get is still equal to uh, 0 to infinity okay what we will now do is we have both these formulas and we will add them up we will add this and this you might ask why add them up but you will see that this complex conjugate and this uh, uh, p itself will simplify in a very very nice way so we have this and we add and as well 
we not only add, but we also subtract, so we write plus minus. So we have to do this for the integrals too. So this is what we end up. And I started off with the conjugate because it makes the formula be much, much easier and much nicer without rearranging things, okay? So we have this body. Now you see we have gamma to the s and n we have here also. That can be factored out. And here you see we have uh, u to the n s minus 1 and here also. So this will be also factored out. But before heading forward, let's look what he did, okay? Next, he just used this p and wrote it in um, parts by using the real part, which is a, which he just called a, and the imagery part, which he called b. Okay, then you get these equations. Actually, these are just very, very standard uh, equations here. This is if this is p, then the complex conjugate of this, which is by definition just changing the sign of the imagery part, which is plus, so it will be become minus, then you can uh, express these complex numbers in terms of polar coordinates, while the magnitude of P is the radius and alpha is the angle. So the magnitude of P, E to the I alpha, and if you conjugate something, its magnitude will not change, only the angle will get a negative sign. Okay, the sign will change. So if you take it to the S power, you have P to the S, here, just the S, and this is very important. This is exponential rule that the S is just going to the argument, and here it's the same. Now, you see that P to the S and P uh, uh, complex conjugate of S can be just expressed by P to the S, okay? So uh, the magnitude of P and only uh, differ by this part, okay? This is why you can just take this and take it out of this both equations, okay, both parts. We take this out and we are only left with these bodies, e to the minus i alpha s, and what we will do is we change its position. If we go to the uh, numerator, this minus will become a plus, and the same for this right-hand body, it will become a minus. On the right-hand side, what will happen is we have these bodies, and if we multiply out, we will see something very nice happening. We get e to the minus a u to the n, and here we have the same, so we can factor this out. And we have e to the uh, i b u to the n plus minus e to the minus i b u to the n. Okay. Now let's jump ahead and see what will happen with that. Actually, if you know a little bit about complex numbers, you know maybe the Euler formula, <coughs> sorry, and the relationship of uh, the cosinus function, the sinus function to the exponential function, which is just the Euler formula. So e to the ix is equal to cosinus of x plus i sinus of x. I have a video on that. If you like, visit my channel, and um, it's called Proof of Euler's Identity. Here, I look that up, and you can use these expressions to do a lot of cool stuff. So the first step that I did here again, sorry for the you know, switch back to topic, okay? Here we take this out, we, like I told you, and now we are only left with this. Now if you know what this means, and you take the plus case, okay, where we add them, then you see that this is actually nothing else but twice the cosines of alpha s, okay? This is just by using Euler's identity. Now, here on this side, you will see that we get an, again a cosine, the double angle. Again, this is the plus case. Uh, double cosinus b u to the n. So this is our x now. And if you do the same ideas for the minus case, you will end up having formulas for the sinus, 2i sinus alpha of s. And here the same 2i sinus b u to the n. Actually, you see 2i, 2i cancel out, 2 and 2 cancel out. And we end up having these nice or even awesome and beautiful formulas that are just so mesmerizing, for me at least. I hope for you too. <laughs> okay? These are just beautiful formulas. 
but now we have to get back and understand what what means okay what does p mean what does alpha mean what is a and b okay remember we told that p was a number a complex number of uh, the style a plus ib okay the magnitude of this number is just the square root of a square plus b square okay and this alpha comes into our game by the angle and polar coordinates which you can calculate by the tangent of alpha b over a now there is a very special case when a is going to zero or is equal to zero what you will have then is tangent alpha is equal to b over zero and if you divide a number uh, I say that b is not equal to zero okay the, the case where a and b are equal to zero this is a very nonsense case okay because it doesn't give us a lot but if a is zero only which is this part in this exponential if we don't if we want to erase the exponential part we end up having this equation b over zero which is infinitely large and you get an infinite large value of alpha um, of the tangent of alpha for pi half okay this is important for the next videos because we want to correct some nice and pretty integrals okay I think that concludes this lecture I hope you had fun and if you like my videos please subscribe so see you guys